This is a candid, frank chat with the mayor, Brian Smith. Hi, everybody. We're here in the mayor's office, uh, his worship, Mayor Brian Smith, who just recently won an election, has given us the opportunity to talk to him. And we're looking forward to asking some of the questions that I hope you want to hear him answer or questions that you have. Uh, let's get it started by saying congratulations on winning the election. Thank you very much. The, the first thing that... Uh, that sticks out for me uh, as I'm a new resident. So um, there was a, there were a lot of calls about transparency. Um, I'm here today. You're, I haven't forwarded you any questions. You were willing to take them off the cuff and, and do your best to answer them. Sure. Um, and I appreciate that. And, and to me, that's one leg of transparency. What, what other, what other things do you think that your administration will do or is doing that will satisfy the residents that there's more transparency at City Hall or Town Hall? Yeah, sure, Frank. So, I mean, what we've done already is immediately our first uh, meeting of council, uh, we uh, put forth some motions to, uh, to change some things. The first thing we did is open council to the public, the council chambers. So uh, whenever you see it posted that there's a council meeting or a special council meeting or a, a committee meeting of any sort, uh, you can come in and join us uh, right here at Town Hall within uh, in the building in council chambers. Uh, and unless we're in camera, you're welcome to sit there and, and listen. Uh, we've also, uh, obviously, during those meetings, there is a comment period that the the, the public can get up and uh, as long as they're dealing with something that's on the agenda, they can uh, to make a comment or ask a question. We may not give them the answer that day. Uh, we may get back to them, but it's there for them to use if they wish. Uh, obviously, it's on YouTube as it, as it has been for quite some time. And, uh, uh, you know, we're going to be setting up uh, in the new year uh, a monthly uh, time when we'll have two counselors on duty. Uh, for several hours, uh, probably two or three hours here at Town Hall. Uh, and we'll announce those dates and times where you can come in and sit down with a couple of members of council and ask questions or uh, get information. Uh, and uh, so that, that will help uh, to be more open and transparent. Uh, we're open and transparent uh, in how we're uh, relaying information that we can relay. And uh, as soon as we make a decision, uh, we have uh, our communications department get that out as quickly as we possibly can. And uh, all members of council obviously are available for questions uh, uh, or to meet with uh, citizens if they wish uh, at a suitable time for both parties. And, um, you know, we are, uh, as we move forward uh, into, uh, into this term of council and we get uh, deeper into the redevelopment or the development of Main Street uh, or uh, the, the continuation of the construction on the arena, we'll be very open about that and uh, we'll have public consultation meetings. We'll, we'll have uh, designers here and we'll have the public come out as we did between 2014 and 18 to see that and to comment and uh, where we can take it back and look at it and then maybe make a change or maybe not, but people will be heard. And uh, that's, that's what open and transparent is about and that's, that's what we plan to do. The biggest, the biggest issue with um, in Wasaga has been the beachfront. Um, you hinted at something there that some people are wondering. There was a plan before the previous administration, and there was the plan that you had. How flexible is the existing agreement in allowing you to do or to not bring back, but work in the previous plan that you had in place? Yeah, so uh, as you know, all of that information with respect to the plan uh, and the offer, purchase and sale, so on, is, uh, is an in-camera item. So I can't speak to that specifically now. I can tell you that uh, in the next uh, few days, probably Monday or Tuesday, we will have a, a press release uh, that will let the people of Wasaga Beach know where we're at with that, uh, with that particular uh, uh, offer, purchase, sale, purchase and sale in that plan. Um, but with respect to um, the downtown master plan, if you will, that was created during my last uh, tenure as mayor from 14 to 18, uh, we're uh, planning to get back to that uh, plan and to uh, fulfill it uh, to the best of our ability over the next four years to make sure that uh, uh, the redevelopment of a world-class uh, tourist destination on our beach uh, is occurring and that we create a downtown proper for our full-time citizens first and foremost to enjoy and, and to love. Uh, it's a lot of work. There's a lot of information that's uh, not available to the public at this point because it's been in camera before this term of council that council is working on. 
and is uh, trying to find ways to uh, get that information out to the public so they do know. Um, but at the end of the day, that takes some time. And we, I mean, we've been in office three weeks. I can tell you that in my first three days, I received about 170, uh, 180 uh, real emails, uh, not just uh, junk email. Um, and that takes time to reply to and to get back people on. I'm still replying to some of those. And, and members of council have received a lot of emails. And there's a lot of people uh, with a lot of questions and asking, uh, you know, where we're going from here. And we'll be certain to make sure that we get that out to the good folks of Wasaga Beach as soon as we possibly can. Uh, but give us, uh, give us a little bit of time into the new year, uh, at least uh, January, and I think we'll be in good shape to, uh, to get uh, everything we can out to the public. So is that uh, not only we are open and transparent, but we're able to bring out some of that information from the past so as that people can understand where we're going in the future. Yeah, because there were, there, there were two thoughts, two plans. Um, bottom line is as a resident here, uh, the, the thing that I look forward to, and as far as, you know, what the theme will be is that when you drive up Main Street, you want to know that you're that you're in a town, uh, you know, a, a, a town with a lot of heartbeat and stuff. So, that is that uh, is that still going to be part of it? You know, will, will it be uniform? Do, do, we, do you know what it's going to look like so that when I drive up the road, what I'm going to see? What's the intent? Well, well, as I've said, Frank, there's going to be a lot of public consultation, mm -hmm. uh, as there was in my last term. Uh, the downtown master plan, which is still available on the town's website, if you go and look at that, you'll see what the plan was then uh, and what I believe we're trying to accomplish still now. Uh, you know, you have, uh, you have uh, a brand new council with a very uh, clear mandate. Uh, the people voted and, and uh, the mandate is clear. And everyone uh, on this council, I know, um, platformed and ran uh, based on um, similar things uh, and the redevelopment of, uh, of our beachfront uh, to make a world-class destination, uh, to create a downtown proper for our full-time citizens to enjoy, to finish our arena library. And I just finished a tour of that before you and I sat down. Uh, I can tell you that it's, uh, it's going to be a pretty spectacular place. Uh, but it's 60 plus million dollars and, and this council is going to work very hard to attempt to still try and get some funding from other levels of government to help us with that. It's a big burden uh, and uh, we have got to do everything can, we, we can to help with that. Uh, so we have to alleviate that tax burden every way we can. Uh, and there's many other things. There's other projects in town. It's not just about the redevelopment of our beach. It's not just about building a downtown proper. It's not just about the arena library. It's about bringing more services that people require to town. It's about um, infrastructure. It's about making sure that our streets are uh, wide enough and big enough and uh, built property to handle the traffic that's going to come. And I'm not talking about the traffic necessarily from tourism. I'm talking about the everyday traffic we'll face in this community. We're one of the fastest growing communities in the country, in North America, and I think we're going to continue to do so. Why? It's a beautiful town with the longest freshwater beach in the world full of beautiful people who are loving and caring and understand what it's like to be good to your fellow human being. And people see that when they come here and they want to move here. And we've seen that for years. I, I remember this community when it was uh, probably 4,000 uh, population or less. And here we are at 25,000. And I believe we'll be closer to 40 within the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, I think we'll be well ahead of where the legislation thinks we should be or wants us to be. Uh, so we have to be prepared for that. And uh, you know, council's got a lot on their plate. There's a lot to deal with. There's a lot of expense that's there that we're dealing with from, from the last four years uh, that we've got to uh, look after and try to alleviate those tax burdens uh, as well as keep us moving forward. So um, as I've said many times before, being a politician isn't rocket science, but it's not easy. When we talk about the beach, uh, you know, the town doesn't own the beach. It's the province that owns the beach. There's been a move to remove the sand off uh, Beach Drive and it's stopped. And from what I understand is right now, if there's anything else you can add to the fact that the province is waiting to, uh, to allow the permit to move the sand that was on the beach that we walked on, for those of us that live here, we walked on that same sand as we do to the beach part. And, and the road was used as sort of a 
I guess I'll call it an overflow for the beach, timely because the beach sand wasn't as long as it's been in the past, as right. long as it is today, in fact. Uh, where are we with that? So um, I can tell you that uh, I made a promise uh, in my campaign that if I was elected mayor, that uh, we would start the process of opening, be reopening Beach Drive the day after we were sworn into office. And I'm happy to say that we actually were able to get that started before we were sworn into office. Uh, and uh, the day after it, it was official and, and uh, staff were working at that. It turns out there were something like, and don't hold me specifically to this number, but 86,000 cubic meters of sand on the road. Uh, and so uh, town staff were starting to clear away before uh, we were sworn in the high points from the blow sand. Uh, but once the election happened, I think it was pretty clear that, uh, you know, if they were paying any attention to the election, that we were going to get that road opened. And so we started to do so. We started to work with the ministry. Uh, we were taking that sand and dumping it uh, close to the water so that the wave uprush would grab it and take it back out. Uh, which is vitally important because many people who don't understand Wasaga Beach is a relic beach. And so when that sand blows away, it never comes back. It doesn't replenish itself. So when we can capture good, clean blow sand uh, from the beach and put it back on the beach, that's vitally important to maintain uh, and keep our beach as beautiful as it is. So uh, at some point throughout that process, the ministry said, you know what? This is a lot of sand. Let's make sure that it's, it is good and clean and let's do some testing. Let's get a permit. So we've got the, the permit. We now have some testing going on to make sure that it's good. Uh, and we have no reason to doubt it won't be. We hope to get that back as soon as possible. And we'll continue uh, in the spring then to get that road uh, uh, completely opened uh, for the good folks of Wasaga Beach to go down and enjoy um, the most beautiful sunsets in the world. I guess the safe bet will be that it wasn't imported. It wasn't important, so, that's correct. So, All that sand that is on the road today was not taken from anywhere else or brought from anywhere else. It happened in one overnight storm, is my understanding, uh, and it literally uh, filled that road up with about two feet of sand. Uh, so it is from the water, it is from the bay, and uh, I believe that's where it'll go back to. And if there is something that isn't right, well, then we'll take it elsewhere, but uh, we'll use it uh, elsewhere if need be. And to your point where you put it in because the sand leaves, and as the sand leaves, the water gets closer to the stores. So if you right. put more sand in there, I'm just trying to help the, the sure. viewers understand. Sure, yeah, absolutely. That, you know, it, it'll, make, it'll extend the length of the beach, the sand part. Right, and I think we'll solve a lot of issues when we do that redevelopment and we raise Beach Drive up. I mean, we look at Beach Drive today uh, and the last uh, a high water that we had a few years ago. That's probably the 100-year record. I don't think we've ever had really? water higher. Uh, and so if we raise Beach Drive up three or four or five feet, I think it'll be several hundred years before it gets to that <laughs> level. So we'll alleviate several problems there, but we'll hopefully design it in such a way that the sand, when it is blowing, that it kind of you know blows backwards. So it hits that wall. Maybe there's a curve in that wall that the water or the sand hits it and then goes back onto the beach versus... Uh, you know, taking off all over town. It's tough, uh, you know, as the mayor, you know, what you're, you're pushed on, on one side to create progress and help because progress helps business advance and business is what makes a town work. We're not, we're not top heavy as far as businesses are concerned. Uh, how do you see in your administration to, tr to attract businesses to our community? So I've been a businessman for almost 40 years, uh, and I can tell you that Wasaga Beach is not an easy town to do business in. It's, uh, it's, it's always been a summertime town, and although we have 25,000 residents uh, today, um, we don't have the uh, infrastructure from a business standpoint that most communities have. We don't have a downtown proper, for example, where it's lined with shops of all kinds uh, and stores and restaurants. Um, for people to, to go to uh, in one place and, and do their business. So I've always said that, you know, most of us don't leave town to shop in Collingwood or Barrie or elsewhere because we want to. It's because we don't have enough choice here. And so uh, by creating a downtown proper uh, and creating that atmosphere that every other community has, I think we will solve uh, a lot of that issue. Uh, but at the end of the day, what's important for people to know is it's council's job uh, in a sense, to get people to come to Wasaga Beach. 
it's the business's job to get them in their door. And um, because uh, we are so far behind other communities uh, from a retail standpoint, that's taken, that's going to take and has taken some work. Um, until we build a downtown proper and create that place of being, if you will, I think we're going to struggle a bit. Um, you know, often you hear, you know, we're, we're a town that is uh, financially stable. Uh, we've got good reserves, so on and so forth. And that is absolutely true. And, and uh, my past council, councils before that, the last council, this council, have all been diligent to, to some extent or another uh, to continue to improve uh, the reserves um, and, and to make sure we're in good, good financial shape. The, the, the last few years, we've seen those reserves drop drastically, and we're going to see them drop a lot more as we have to start paying for this arena library. But the reason we are in such great financial shape, or one of the reasons, I believe, is because we don't have the services uh, that offer, are offered in other communities. So a community like Collingwood or Midland or Penetang or Barrie, um, you know, Owen Sound, Thornberry, everyone around us with a proper main street that has government offices and so forth, there's a cost to that. And uh, because of that, those towns are not nearly as flush as Wasaga Beach as we move forward and, and provide the services that people want and require, we're going to see those, those uh, 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 the balance, if you will, on that scale start to maybe tip this way. But what we will always do, I'm confident, as long as I'm mayor, is ensure that that is balanced in a way that is still affordable and sustainable by our citizens of Wasaga Beach. Um, you know, it, it's, I've said it before, to go back to the taxpayer every time uh, is just not sustainable. So we need to think of ways to generate more revenue for the municipality. We need to think outside the box, as I've said many times before, uh, in order to make sure that we can find ways to provide more services, better services, better quality of life. And, and don't take me wrong, our quality of life in Wasaga Beach is second to none. <laughs> Uh, but better quality, even still, uh, is going to take some work and it's going to take some dedication. I am confident, all the confidence in the world in this council, that, that we'll be able to do that and accomplish that. When we uh, talk about the Twin Pad Arena, it was just, uh, there's, there's information out there. It's been, it's been said that um, there's been a report, actually, that uh, there's a $2 million bill that's coming for the furniture, the furnishings for that, for that complex, a uh, half pretty much split in half between the twin pad and, and of course, the library. Um, how much of a surprise is that, and how well do you think? I know you're raising money. They've raised $1.7 do, do you have any comments on that and how to deal with it? Yeah, sure. I mean, this is a number that was built into the budget uh, from the beginning. Um, and, of course, when you hear a number like $2 million, for most people, a number like $2 million is, I mean, that's a big, big number. Uh, and um, when you think $2 million in furnishings, that's crazy. But when you look at it in the grand scheme of things of a $60 million, which will probably be a set closer to a $70 million complex or more, uh, $2 million is, uh, is not uh, a lot. Uh, and at the end of the day, if you're going to build structures and you want to have new arenas, new libraries, uh, cultural centers, uh, Schools are another example. The cost of fixtures and furnishings in schools is, is high as well. Um, when you build your, your new home, if you want new furniture, it's a cost that is in everything we do. We can't build an arena and a library without furnishing it. Uh, people will say, well, why don't you use the furniture from the old library? I'm sure that we will use as much of that as we possibly can. But this is a much bigger complex. This is two ice pads, not one. It's a much bigger common area space there's a lot more rooms uh, available to the public to use within that space. The library is, 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 you know, much, much larger than our current library. And it's going to take a lot more shelves and a lot more books uh, and computers and tables and chairs and so on. So um, when I first heard $2 million, I would like everyone else was like, oh, geez, that's a steep number. What, when you really sit down and look at it, it's, it's a reasonable number, uh, and I think when the people walk through the doors of the new arena and library, uh, if you don't think of the total cost and the, that tax burden we're going to have, 
uh, I think they're going to think it's a pretty spectacular place to be. Let's 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 also remind folks that the library, and I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be more interactive than the previous library. It's going to be bigger, and it's going to be more user friendly, community friendly, senior friendly. It's going to be a place where people are going to go to basically live live a life how they want to live it. You know, children will be able to go see. Uh, I've heard so much about it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And, and I'm promoting it only because it's a good thing. Anything that elevates people's minds and, and em- they can embrace together. You were talking about the the reality of the way Wasagans are. They're very communal and they, they do a lot of things together. This is just going to be another opportunity. In the winter, we need more stuff like that. So it'll be busy in the winter, I think. Absolutely. I think it'll be busy all year round. You know, I've had, I can probably say, a hundred plus people who have said to me over uh, over the years, and especially in the last six months, you know, why do we need a bigger library? Who Who uses a library anymore? And here's what I can tell you. More people use libraries today than ever before because a library, and I, I was at the library yesterday to do a, a photo with uh, two great ladies who have been 15 and 16 years on our library board and have decided to retire, you know, Nancy and Debbie and, and great, wonderful ladies who have given so much to this community. So we give them a small token of our appreciation and we thank them. And of course, we're there and it's kind of loud. And I'm thinking to myself, and I actually said this, I said, geez, we got to calm down. We got to quiet down. We're in the library. <laughs> and and the, and and Pam Powell, our, our chief librarian, said, uh, the CAO of, or CEO of our library said, not anymore. That's not the way it is. Libraries are about a place of, of being and uh, and they are communal and it is about a meeting place. And, and it's not about just books. It's about computers. It's about uh, getting together group organizations. It's about daycare. It's about, it's about life in general. A library is so much more. Maybe we need to find a new name other than library to, to, to get oh, that stigma. But absolutely. I can tell you uh, the Wasaga Beach Library, our little library here is a fun place to be. Uh, and the new library, I think, will be much more fun. Uh, and when you see it, uh, you'll be very impressed with how many different areas there are in that library that a lot of people who haven't been to a library in a while will will just be amazed that there is so much action and so much um, interaction within our libraries. And then throw the arena in there with it. I mean, uh, double ice pad arena, room for 860 people to seat on one side on a regular basis and up to 25 to 2,800 for uh, other events such as concerts. Maybe it's Disney on ice, who knows? Uh, But again, those things in our own community that we can attend and enjoy as a community, I I don't think uh, once people see it and they've used it, they'll have any complaints about it. I've heard the term community center, so that that could be part of it too. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it's it's important on the subject. Before that, before the even one of the counselors, uh, uh, Faye Ego was she tried really hard to find out how much the appraisal was for the arena. Um, I, I don't mean to. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but but I'm sure that's one of the things everybody's looking at their, at their screen, going, Frank, are you going to ask them about the appraisal? So I'm asking you about the appraisal. Sure. Are we going to find out about that? As you know, council has strict rules under the municipal act that we need to follow, uh, and so uh, it's one of those items that I think every member of this current council believes should be made public. Uh, I'll give you an example. When when my last council made the purchase of the beachfront lands for thirteen point six million dollars, um, you know, right after that deal was done uh, and the, and and it had closed and we took possession, we made sure that the public were aware of what we spent and what our plans were moving forward. Uh, and uh, that is exactly, in my belief, what should happen with any of these types of of deals that municipalities do. So this council, I can assure you, will at some point let you know what the appraisal was versus what was paid. We're in the in the process right now. We've just got to make sure that we cross the I or cross the T's and dot the I's so that this council doesn't step out of bounds uh, in doing so. But I can tell you that it is a priority uh, to make sure that the people of Wasaga Beach know where their money is being spent, how it is being spent, uh, and that we're open and transparent. At the end of the day, there's nothing to hide. You might not like the decision that your council makes, but it is council's decision to make. 
uh, and that's why you have elections. And uh, as I said earlier, this election, I think, was very clear. The mandate was clear for this council. And so we will bring all that information that we possibly can uh, to the public as soon as we possibly can. That's, I'm sure a lot of people are glad to hear that. Um, there's also uh, a schedule and how much the arena library is going to cost. Uh, do we have any uh, projections as of now or um, anything that people can hear that uh, would help them to understand how much it's going and uh, is going towards it and how much time is necessary before we can go in there? So I would say we're at about 45% of construction, uh, give or take. Don't hold me to that number, but uh, you know that's a number that I believe we're close to. Um, I think we're probably shooting for, um, you know, uh, end late 2023 to open. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, over the winter and the pandemic, if anything should occur there again. But uh, I can tell you that we'll be pushing hard uh, to get this arena uh, library built, uh, built to a good quality. We'll be doing everything we can to try and find dollars to help us pay for it. Uh, and we will try and get it open as quickly as we possibly can. Listen, having a building sit there 95% done and not open does nothing for our community. So it, it is a priority to get it built, get it built well, get it open and get people using it. So at this point, I think we're probably 45% there uh, and we've got uh, probably about a year to go. Yeah, it, it's a facility that didn't get much help from from the province and the federal government. If, if, if it was planned as a futuristic building with considers, uh, consideration for the environment and such, do you have? It's been said that they're going to try and make it friendly that in that way. But how friendly can it be coming in the back end? Is there is there is it a real? opportunity or is it one where you're just going to do your best? Yeah, so my council, uh, again, from 14 to 18, and I don't want to dwell on the past yeah, yeah. here, um, but at the end of the day, we uh, had started the process, uh, started to looking at other libraries and doing tours of other arenas, uh, and uh, it was on the books to, to, to build a, a new library, twin pad arena and library. Um, but what we said was that we would not do this without other levels of funding to help us. And that would have been the only thing that, that stopped us. And I can tell you, as far as I know, Wasaga Beach is probably one of, if not the only community that has uh, done this, uh, built a new arena library or any uh, community type building uh, that did not get funding. I mean, uh, uh, municipalities, 444 across the province, uh, anyone who does this uh, gets some other funding. For whatever reason, we did not. And I don't have that answer as to why. It is something we'll try to find out. That's but yesterday. It's that's yesterday. Forward, right? Exactly. Uh, so what our job now as your council to do is to find ways that we can make changes to this building before it's completed that are uh, not going to cost us an arm and leg to do or additions that might help us garner uh, funding from the province or the feds. And I can tell you that we've got staff looking into that. Uh, we're looking at every, we're, we're not going to leave one rock unturned uh, if we can find a way to, to attract funding. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, January uh, 24 to 26, I think, we'll be down at the Roma Conference uh, where we'll get an opportunity to see and, and meet with uh, uh, provincial uh, ministers. Uh, and we'll be working it and we'll be working it hard. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll fund it and we'll open it no matter what. Uh, but we are doing our utmost um, and staff are working hard behind the scenes to find dollars to help us with it. It's, it's a 60 million is a big nut to crack for any municipality. It, it sure is. Uh, you know, uh, Vaughn is building at the same time and they, about 80% of the funding comes from the government, different levels of government. So yeah. North Bay, you name it. Yeah, it's, so. it's, it's a shame, but it is what it is. Uh, let's talk about staffing. Um, you have a new CAO coming in. Uh, the existing one that was temporary is staying with uh, with Wasaga. Right. Uh, where's it? Do you have a place for him? Do we know where he's going to be? Yeah. So uh, I, I'll start with uh, the interim CAO. Uh, so the interim CAO Jerry Marshall was an interim CAO uh, before when I was the mayor, um, and uh, he was a natural pick immediately to get someone uh, to come in after George uh, retired. 
uh, and here he is. And the great thing about Jerry uh, that I like is he knows uh, he knows it from both sides. He knows it from the private sector. He knows it from the municipal sector. And he's a doer. Uh, he's a get it done kind of person and uh, hard worker. And so he's been a great interim CAO, uh, was before and is this time. And council has appointed our new CAO as opposed to going out to search for one. We appointed one and that's Andrew McNeil. And Andrew McNeil was a natural fit, council decided, simply because he was our Director of Economic and Development and Tourism before. Uh, and uh, the downtown master plan that we all know was his brainchild. I mean, he created that uh, with the help of council and staff and, uh, and uh, outside sources. And that's what we sold to the good folks of Wasaga Beach back then. So to bring him back to help take that and lead it and move it forward to get it done was a natural fit. But he has the qualifications to be a CAO, and I know this has been asked in the community, uh, you know, what qualifications does he have? From the municipal standpoint, uh, under the Municipal Act, there's really no qualification required of a CAO because a CAO is really a manager of people. He's the captain of the team. His, his or her job is to bring people together, to get a team that is uh, high quality, uh, and is high quantity. In other words, they're, they're making things happen and they're doing it in the way that best suits the community. Uh, Andrew has that ability. But Andrew also, uh, when he left Wasaga Beach shortly after, was hired by the city of Brampton and leads their planning and, uh, and building uh, and, uh, and other departments there. I think he has, again, I'm not 100% certain, but it's somewhere around 180 staff under him currently, which is more staff than the town of Wasaga Beach has. So an absolute great fit. Uh, we're excited. He'll be here January 10th. Uh, he'll get settled in. I'm sure he'll want to meet with staff one-on-one, -on -one, uh, get to know everybody or reacquaint with everybody uh, and get uh, get moving forward. So what will happen with Jerry Marshall at that time? Well, when we brought Jerry on on a, on a six-month contract, it was for interim CAO and special projects. And we've got some things here that we need to, to be looking into and to uh, uh, lend a hand with other departments to get things off the ground and get things moving. Uh, intergovernmental affairs, uh, finding money, for example. Uh, and Jerry will continue on with that and assist Andrew uh, in, in, the, in the foreseeable future. The, when, when we come to town hall, uh, we, we do business, whatever it is that we're, we're meeting the staff, uh, Speak to the importance of uh, a happy team, a team that wants to be a part of what's going on and how that helps with the interaction with the community in, in general. Absolutely. And it's a, it's a great question. I'm, gr I'm glad you've asked it, Frank. Um, let me start by saying that the town of Wasaga Beach has an absolutely amazing, dedicated, hardworking group of people that we employ. Our department heads are second to none. Our staff are second to none. Uh, and But they've had some challenges over the last four years. Uh, 84 or 86 of them have left over a four-year period. And that, of course, when you lose that many staff in a short period of time, puts a lot of pressure on everybody uh, and a lot of strain. And so, um, you know, it's been a tough go. And then you throw in a pandemic uh, where, you know, they're not allowed to work from home. And they come to work every day worried about truly their life and what they may take home to their family. That's a very, very stressful situation. So it's been a tough go. Um, but I can tell you that uh, staff and the town of Wasaga Beach, the people in this town, can know that this council is dedicated to making sure, first and foremost, that our most important people, the people that face you first and foremost every day. Uh, the most important people in any organization, our staff, are going to be well looked after. So what have we done? Uh, we've, uh, I think we've lightened up uh, the attitude. Uh, we're getting into budget here. We're going to allow funding in the budget to hire uh, more staff because it is very lean and they are overworked. I don't mind saying that. And I know that all here uh, as soon as this airs, I'll get emails and calls from people that say, don't tell me that bureaucrats are overworked. Well, I'm telling you they are, and they're tired, um, and they deserve better. Uh, and so we're going to look after them. We've also, in the process of implementing a very robust whistleblower policy, uh, that will be uh, looked after by an outside source outside of the town 
uh, of the municipality that staff can feel comfortable to go to should they feel there is something awry or something wrong without worrying in any way, shape, or form about any repercussion or blowback from within the organization. Uh, to expect that staff should be able to report a problem uh, from another staff member or a higher up in the, in the organization to the organization is just ludicrous. Um, nobody is going to do that, or very few people are going to have the courage to do that. And after what we've seen in the last few years, um, this council is absolute certain that these people need to be looked after. They need to be treated with the respect they deserve. And most of all, you know, uh, happy staff uh, mean a happy community. Uh, we are bound and determined, this council, to create a culture of excellence uh, in how we deal with uh, the people who pay our salaries and how we deal with each other within uh, the municipality of Wasaga Beach and this organization. Again, I want to reiterate how proud I am of this staff and we're going to look after them. The holidays are coming up. Uh, I was asked, uh, I don't know whether because he wanted a free drink or something, about a <laughs> levy, uh, having a levy. It's, a, it's an old tradition in this community. It disappeared for a little while, obviously, because of the pandemic. Is it too early to ask if that's coming back this year or we're going to wait a little longer? Yeah, so I don't mind uh, sharing my thoughts on a levy. Uh, I understand the tradition and I understand uh, the thought process behind it, but it's always been my feeling that uh, the mayor's levy really was an opportunity for the mayor to invite his closest or her closest friends and, and supporters uh, to wine and dine for an hour or two, uh, and the average individual in the community doesn't come out and doesn't enjoy that or benefit it. So uh, when I was mayor from 14 to 18, I discontinued the mayor's uh, New Year's levy, and, and I've already asked staff to uh, not do it again this time. So what we're going to do moving forward, starting next year, is we're going to uh, have staff work on uh, a Town of Wasaga Beach Mayor's New Year's celebration. And that'll be a New Year's Eve celebration that we will hold uh, maybe at the new library uh, arena or at the RecPlex where they uh, will have a great band, a great meal, and a great opportunity for people to buy tickets to be a fundraiser to raise some significant dollars on an annual basis that we can now put back into uh, needy um, organizations or folks within our community so as that we help a lot more people uh, over the New Year's and, and the Mayor's Levy or Celebration versus just just some pomp and circumstance for the sake of pomp and circumstance. Fair enough. Do you have a message you'd like to leave people with? Uh, you, you know, it it's closing downtown. It's closing down for um, the holiday break. Right, right. Do you have a message for the Absolutely. Uh, town of Saga Beach, uh, Town Hall will be closed between Christmas and New Year's, as it always is. Um, but at the end of the day, I just want to say on behalf of Council uh, and the staff at the Town of Wasaga Beach, uh, and from my family to uh, you and yours and everybody out there to wish uh, everyone a very, very Merry Christmas and a happy and most importantly, healthy and prosperous New Year. Folks, we have an absolutely beautiful and amazing town full of great people. And I am proud to say that uh, this new council that you have elected is determined determined to make this community the best it can be. And we're going to get that job done. Bear with us. We're going to need your help. It's not going to be easy, but we can do it. Well, it was a tradition to have a chat with the mayor. Uh, I want to really thank you for allowing us into your office. And uh, um, this also, I'll post this on my webpage, uh, Wasaga, Wasaga, Candid Frank at the Beach. And uh, I'm really grateful for this opportunity to talk to you. And thank you for being so forthright with answering the questions that I asked. And I'll remind people again, you didn't ask me to tell you what I was going to ask. And I respect that. And good luck and enjoy uh, the, the holiday break. And uh, I look forward to the new year. It's been, it's been an interesting transition. And I hope everything works really well for you. I really appreciate this. Frank, I appreciate that very much. Thank you so much. And Merry Christmas, everybody. For Wasaga Wasega, I'm Candid Frank at the beach. If you want to contact us by email, 
Email me at candidfrank at hotmail.com. Watch us and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Candid Frank Stanishi 1030 or message me on Facebook at Candid Frank Stanishi for any ideas or comments you have about the program. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time.